Center page has already been up. Because one of these is incorrect and I can't tell which one. Hello, and welcome to the Rummaging Ferret. Hi guys. So, I've been working on Etsy today. I had the day off from work. So, I've been working on another planner page. The ferret planner page has already been up for a little while now. So, the one I added next was my poodles and puddles one. So I've been doing the photography for that for most of the day. Well, not for most of the day. I finished it because I had to change the font and everything on it and change the colors for that. And then I went about photographing it and doing the video. I had a little um, porcelain poodle set of three. So I've just been using these little guys off my knickknack shelf. I've had these for eons. Somebody got these for me at a garage sale when I was a little girl. <laughs> I was using these for props and my glasses as well. I filled it out so you could see what some of the habit trackers look like when they're filled out and the circles are where you put like your numbers for what day of the week it is. My internet's been pretty good <laughs> since I replaced a modem. Today I was a little worried this morning because my internet seemed like it was down this morning when I woke up. We've had a little bit of problem with it. I've been getting disconnected here and there, like when I play Overwatch or Hearthstone. But it hasn't been bad and it has been kind of sparse. So my internet's been pretty solid. Enough for me to upload video and photos to Etsy. The other thing I've been doing too is this is my book of... Keywords, so like when you make an Etsy listing, there's keywords that you have to put in, and that's how people find you, right? So I've been going through and finding, you know, what keywords are good for me, what keywords are slightly better, and that's taken me four hours, I guess, to do all that, to film it, photography, edit the photos, put it up. It's now live. So you can go in and uh, do a digital download of it, purchase it for three bucks, um, and you can use it as your springtime planner. I like the weekly ones. I used to use a tear-off one. I started making them because I wanted one that suited me better for what I needed. I figured if it's good for me, it's probably good for someone else too. So it's got like a weekly habit tracker where you can track things like which days of the week you've been jogging, for the monthly tracker, you got things that are a little bit more long-term. Um, things that you might only do once a week. Or how often do I upload a video? How often do I post to social media? How often do I um, put up an Etsy listing? Um, how often do I finish a drawing? Some of the longer-term things that you want to track, that's what your monthly habit tracker is for. What you can do is you just write down the days of the month, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Then you just put an X through, circle, um, or just use like a highlighter. So I'm glad that's up. I'm going to be working on another listing and seeing if I can't get that up and posted to Etsy today. I've got, I think it's four different things. So there's the planner page for the poodles. There's the poodles and puddles sticker sheet, which I need to print, cut, and then photograph. Art print of Phi that I need to print. I actually have to resize that. The downloadable one for your phone background is done. I need to post that up too. So really, I should probably do that one next. So get that done and then on to the next thing, I guess. <laughs> They're probably not gonna get all get done today because I have to photograph all of them and you know I've started all the listings. I don't remember how fleshed out the listings actually are. <laughs> right? So we'll see. So I've done all the footwork in Photoshop and I've brought them into Cricut's Makerspace. I'm actually making um, my back panel and my sticker separate so that way I can do a kiss cut around the stickers but do a die cut around the actual sticker sheet. Now I'm doing overkill here by doing four back plates to one set of stickers. You really only need two. I'm aligning all the positioning up so that way 
I don't have any offset cut lines. All my cut lines will be literally stacked on top of each other perfectly. That's why I'm typing in all my decimal points and everything here. And then what I'm going to end up doing is taking all of the backing plates and the stickers themselves, rearranging them, and then I'm going to take them and copy and paste and duplicate those to have another set so I actually have two individual sticker sheets. Again, four back plates is overkill, you really only need two. And I'm just moving one set off to the sides so they're not overlapping and retitling my project. We're going to take everything and we're going to attach it all together and then click make it. So it'll show you a preview and then you just going to hit continue and then I'm actually going to use my printer settings instead of using the Cricut Maker's printer settings instead. You have that option. Um, a lot of the times that pop-up will actually be behind your makerspace, so you might actually have to look for the individual window and bring it up. Uh, I've already selected my settings, and here's the printout. So I'm just going to attach it to the tack mat and load it into my Cricut. So you can see how it's kiss cut, just the stickers themselves, and has fully cut through the sticker sheet itself for the die cut. Now my sticker sheets have holes at the top, so that way you can pop them into a binder and have them just hanging out in your binder instead of having to shove them in a pocket or anything. I'm gonna move on to photographing my new sticker sheets here. So I actually have a wood background that I've stained myself and I'm just kind of setting up just a little photo booth to put these in with some other items. I actually just use my camera on my phone to take product photography. I do have kind of like a box light that I shine on them. The wooden background didn't really work so well for this light pastel colored sticker sheet set that I've got. So I decided to go and use this other table that I have in the back that I usually keep my Cricut on um, because it goes better with the theming. The wood was too jarring. I feel like I'm always in my pajamas. <laughs> I just, I work so many hours and the only time I really have to work on this is super late at night and that's the only way to continually crank out stuff for the shop and to get things done is to not care about daylight and to just work through the night. Now I fix the color and the lighting in Photoshop itself when I go to edit photos, but this is an unedited video of the lighting situation I've got going on. Um, I do move the cords out of the way, but this is sort of the setup that I have for taking the photos. And here is one of the product movies for that. And I'm just gonna go in and upload everything to Etsy. I didn't really like the wood with the white, so I switched to that white background and I liked that a lot more. 
I do copy and paste some of my listings and then go back through and edit them so I don't have to edit as much. So I do have placeholder photos that I do swap out. And I'm just gonna go in here into Photoshop and change the brightness and the contrast a little bit just to really make it pop and bring those colors to where they should be. Didn't really feel like the contrast was doing much or it was making it too white where it didn't look natural. We're just gonna save that and then we're gonna post that up onto Etsy as well. And here's kind of the final result of what my shop kind of looks like. There's the listing. Oh, there it is. And it's kind of, there's the video. As well as our product photos. And close-ups and in use. They turned out really well. And here is some measurements. And then I also threw in like a collection so people could see other stuff and a little bit about me. Hi guys, so I've been working on Facebook shops. They allow me to send people to my Etsy website for each listing. So basically what I'm doing is, it's kind of simple but it's kind of not. For the most part I'm copying and pasting everything over. I've run into a few glitches with it because I've got two sizes and two different paper types for my prints it's one not showing all the different sizes you can get B not showing all the different prices and just showing the highest price and another weird thing about it is that you can't reorder the pictures like the photos if you put them in the order you don't necessarily want them in, you're just uploading them. Then there's also the problem of I'm having... There's... Like, I'm learning it, but there's different layers to it. So you have your catalog, which is like all your inventory. And then you have... Sets, and then you also have categories which I think are the same thing. It's really confusing. I'm trying to figure everything out. It's not too bad. It really does get kind of... The interface is kind of... Hey! Thank you. Nope, still gonna chew. Okay. Parrots. So anyways, so the interface is very all over the place. So like they have one section, it just seems like an entirely different program for all your inventory, but then they give you categories and sets within that, but then you pull out of that and you go into a different one that sets up the interface for your shop. It's really both buggy and complex, but like... You can't go back and edit your listings once you put them in. Like, you can, but you can't. And I've had problems where I've tried to edit it on my phone instead of my computer, and it just does not work. Um, it's like, this listing has some issue, and, you know, it boots you out. Like, it's really dumb. It's got a lot of problems, and I've... I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it, but I need to use it because of the base of people that I would have more access to than just Etsy's search engine. Does that make sense? Like, my brother doesn't really know how to use technology, but he uses Facebook sometimes. 
an Instagram. So I would really like to build up my following on Instagram and have that linked back to my shop, right? Well, Facebook is owned or owns Instagram. So they are connected and they're easily used together. So for people like my brother and other people out there that know how to navigate Facebook and like Facebook, I hate using Facebook. <laughs> Like, it's easier for them, so I want them to be able to use it that way and be redirected into my Etsy site and be able to purchase things from there. So I'm glad that Facebook has opened a Facebook shop and that I can use my Etsy for that and I don't have to s create an entirely separate shop. Although I kind of do have to create an entirely separate shop, but... <laughs> Because I have to reload everything, it doesn't just pull everything from Etsy. I've been uploading... So I've got this on one monitor. Hello, Absent. So I've got my Etsy shop on one monitor, right? And I'm copying and pasting everything over to the other shop. Um, so basically, I can go in, add photos, tags, the description, all of which I can paste from Etsy over here to this monitor. So this is like their inventory page, I guess you could call it, and they call it categories, but then they have like sets, right? So okay, sure, you could make your sets, like I got maps, I got prints, which I've had the most problem with, and then I've got like vinyl stickers, so that's cool, but then if you go out of this, so if you go down to shops, there's your shop, right? So go to edit. And then this is like the interface for your shop, which gets a little confusing. And then here's the other thing is you have to get approval for all your items. So it takes, I can't just bounce back and forth and fix things. And then if you go up here, right? So this is add new so these are like your sets but they're not linked to your sets so i have to go to collection which is different from sets but then here's a set i made but it's under collections so i guess it's the same but i can't add it because i'm waiting for approval for other things for other the stickers that i just uploaded right so It's complicated because they used it, like here it's collections, but on the other one it sets. And then it gets super bogged down and slow. Look how long this is taking. My prints aren't here. It won't show the different sizes and it'll just give the largest price tag. Instead of like the lowest one or give like a range. But if you go into the inventory, it understands that you can have different sizes matched with different paper types. But when you go to the store and the interface for it, it doesn't understand that at all. Okay, let me show you. All right, so let's go back to this. And exit builder. Go back to my catalog. Go into my items. So, for, let's go to the deactivated ones. All right, so for this, look. So this acknowledges that there are different paper types and different paper, this is messed up. And for whatever reason, I can't really, oh, now it lets me edit it. It wouldn't let me edit it before. Arg. So like, I couldn't get to this page before. Now I suddenly can. So now I can go in and edit it. Like, it wouldn't let me do this a few minutes ago. But it does. It says one price here, US dollars, but then I have to go... I guess it has to be not on display, not visible for me to edit this. Because when I had it visible before, I couldn't edit it. See, and then here lets you do the variations, right? Create variations. But in here, like, look, I can't... I can't edit the price. It just says this is the price. And I really would like to edit this, <laughs> and I can't. 
like I'm trying and it's not letting me edit it because one of these is incorrect and I can't tell which one. So like if you look here, it just says the same exact thing. Like it just says matte paper here. It doesn't say the size differences, right? So that's a problem. So I tried doing a different one and just doing two different sizes instead of the paper types. And it doesn't even give the variation here. So it doesn't say the size variation. And I can't go in and edit that. I can't edit the variations. <laughs> like, this is so messed up. Alright, sorry for my rant. I'm just, this is so frustrating for me. It really is. Because Etsy, I can, it knows what it's doing. Whereas this platform for Facebook shops does not have a clue. It's a good tool, but it's not tweaked and perfected. There's still a lot of issues with it. And it's really irritating. Because my variants should be the paper type and the paper size and it doesn't acknowledge that but when I go to create a variant it works I don't know it's just and here it'll say like six dollars but if I go to like this one it's like it's not letting me edit this one like it let me edit the other one and I can't <laughs> I want to edit this one so I've got this one highlighted, yeah. So I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna go up to edit. But it pulls this up. And I, I can't, I can't. I can kind of adjust the, the I can adjust the prices, but I don't know, cause it just says glossy paper and matte. It doesn't have the size variance. So I don't know which one I need to adjust the price for. Like, it doesn't let me go in and edit it. I don't know why. It's really frustrating. Okay, I'm done. So here I have pulled it up on my phone and I'm using the app and it takes a while to load, but look, it has matte paper, glossy paper, but that doesn't give the size differences. So it's like, it can only do one or the other. It can't do a size and a paper type, but if I edit it, it says something's wrong, but if I go to the stickers and do it, the stickers which have no variation at all, they're just a sticker, there's no pick or choose size or material or anything, edit the item, it works fine. It works just fine. Everything loads, everything's good, but when you're talking about variations, it, it just doesn't function properly. And here I've tried again and tried to edit it and something's wrong. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed me and my ferrets, it's free to subscribe and remember, there's magic in art.